Island. Hey! Did you all have a good summit? We talked about a lot over this summit. Four tracks, utility, governance, impact, and adoption. And each of those tracks, you got to see over, I think, over 80 presentations. And there's so many more, so much more content coming. You wouldn't believe how much we had to cut, which will be like the uh, director's cut of Cardano 2021. I promise you it'll be like The Hobbit. We'll just keep adding. And there's hundreds more. And all of them, you got to see amazing people, some old, some young, everything in between from all around the world, united by some vision to do something interesting. In the adoption track, we talked about a journey where we went from hundreds of people, thousands of people, tens of thousands of people to well over a million people across all of the users of Cardano, the Aroi users, the Daedalus users, the Reddit, the Telegram, and it keeps growing. People in over 100 countries all around. I was like, wow, that is such an incredible story. We talked about adoption at the business level. We saw great partners like Dish get Fortune 250 company, 8 million users with Boost. And what they bring to the network is so much opportunity and so many challenges and so much unique technology that has to be built and brought to bear. And they're a partner that we can grow with, learn from, and encourage so many others in the ISP world to join the Cardano family, small and large. You saw from World Mobile in Zanzibar, who I'm going to be visiting next month on site in Zanzibar, where they're talking about how to connect the unconnected, to bring people together to allow people to explore complete new models of being an ISP. Instead of saying you have some big monolithic top-down company, maybe we can franchise it and your next door neighbor can provide internet to the entire community as a small business owner. We saw so much other adoption at the governmental level. You guys have heard about Ethiopia. There are dozens of other countries that we're talking to, have reached out to us, and they're talking about everything from how do we better manage the water, how do we take care of property registration, let's discuss e-voting, let's think about the next generation stock market, the next way of handling commodities. That is adoption that once pushed through will be at the scale of tens of millions to hundreds of millions. God, I hope we have a little bit more time, but because boy, it's gonna be fun to handle that and onboard that, but it's coming. And what's so incredible is it's not just coming from a handful of entities. So many of you are trying to bring your governments, your communities, small and large, into the Cardano family. From, I know the mayor, I know the county council, I'm real good friends with the governor, I'm from this place, I'm from that place. There was a guy came in here, he says, Charles, what will it take to get you to Tonga? I said, I want to come to Tonga, I love the food there. My belly does too. That's adoption, and we had a lot of great presentations there, a lot of amazing people there. We saw all of the candidates, I believe, for Fun 6 in Catalyst. Did you guys see some of those pitch videos? Some of you are in them. And this was an opportunity for people of our community, many of which I've never met, I've never interacted with, to tell their stories of who they are, what they want to accomplish, where they want to go, what they want to do for you, the Cardano community. And guess who gets to decide who wins and who loses there? You, the Cardano community! And every single round that's just going to grow, 154 right now have been funded, well, probably 100 more this round, and it just keeps going and going. It's the damn Energizer Bunny of VC. Never stops, never gonna stop. We'll wake up, blink our eyes, thousand. Wake up, blink your eyes, 10,000 all across the world. Some from Africa, some from South America, some from Southeast Asia, some from Australia, some from New Zealand, some from North America. Doesn't really matter. They're coming because they want to build. They want to create. We heard some great announcements. For example, our partner Emergo. They've announced that they're really scaling up their VC side. $100 million fund they've announced. How about that? 
The C Fund, which is my venture capital firm in partnership with Wave, it now has over 30 million assets under management. We started at 10 million, most of it's value appreciation. We're doing pretty good with that portfolio. And it keeps growing. And we've already announced several ventures that we've invested in. We've seen great partners on the utility track, like, for example, DC Spark. They came from Emergo. And now they have Flint, a new light wallet. Boy, do we need that. Ecosystem needs as many mobile experiences as possible. Not only that, they've talked about how do we create Ethereum interoperability within the ecosystem. So we talked about Mamba. We talked about a project of how to bring that in through side chains. But true to Cardano's form, diversity is the key to success and resilience. DC Spark also has a plan independent of Mamba. And both of them, I think, are coming very soon. We talked a lot about smart contract security and quality. This is a moral hazard in our industry. It's one of our biggest failings. We tell people, use this application, do this thing, and then it blows up. Tens of millions and hundreds of millions, then billions of dollars get lost. Yet, somehow, some way, doesn't seem to get better, just seems to get worse. Well, how do you solve it? You solve it with certification. You solve it with auditing. You solve it with standards, rigorous coding practices. So we saw runtime verification. We saw Qvic. We saw CertiK. We saw all of these firms with decades of collective experience in the realm of formal verification, program verification, the kinds of guys you call when you want to build a train, an airplane, or a car, and make sure the damn thing works. And you live to tell the story. And he said, how do we take these amazing innovations born of academia and forged in industry and bring them together and apply them to our industry in a way that scales down to an agile development team? Not PhDs living in a lab with million dollar budgets, but entrepreneurs, two, three people working together. How do we get it to work for them? And then there's the question of, well, what should the experiences be like? And it turns out there's this beautiful isomorphism between certification and an open app store. Right now, the curation model that's been pushed upon the consumers is, don't worry, Papa Apple will take care of you. <laughs> They're going to figure it out one way or another. They'll, uh, they'll tell you who the good people are, who the bad people are. If they're in the app store, somebody's checked it. And of course, sometimes they decide that people shouldn't be in the app store because maybe they compete with Papa Apple. Maybe they compete with Google. Maybe they compete with Microsoft. That's not a good model. No one wants that. That doesn't help innovation. That doesn't allow you to live your dreams, especially if you want to do unorthodox things. So what if you create a store where it's always open, anybody can come, anybody can build, you just submit a transaction to the blockchain, and it's there, but because you have the ability to certify, the way it gets visualized, presented, it appears to the consumer is different. The more work you do to prove the things you have are high quality, not a scam, secure, the better that appears. The less work you do, the worse it appears. Pretty simple concept, right? You preserve openness, but you leave the burden upon the people to prove to the people who are going to be downloading this, using this, trusting it with their identity, their money, their privacy, those components. You leave it to them to prove to you that they've done their homework and they've done it right. What Cardano is doing with so many great partners in the utility track is delivering that to you, the developer. And Plutus was built hand in glove to ensure that this happens. We saw great presentations like Marlowe. Marlowe is just such a beautiful concept. Paint by numbers for financial contracts. Whenever you have a logic that's hard, there's a lot to think about. Generally speaking, what real engineers do, real technologists do, is they build a DSL. Databases are hard things. Relational databases, to access it, to pull something out of a particular memory cell. Every implementation is different from Oracle to Microsoft to MySQL. So we created SQL, a domain-specific language, to unify the way you communicate with a product. And then suddenly, 
Database administrators don't have to have PhDs in computer science. They can just use it to access data. So analogously, why do we not, in this industry, when you are writing smart contracts that control billions of dollars, why don't we have a DSL to make that simple, easy, yet secure? And that was the design brief for Marlowe. And we said it needs to be so simple that I need to have a window with little bricks. And I can take a 12-year-old from Shoshone High School, run them on in, sit them down, and have them click those bricks together, and out comes the other side, a real contract. Use a SAT solver, all these other things under the hood, and we know it works. We know it's not going to crash. Yet a 12-year-old can build it. That is the dream and vision of Marlowe and the DSL-driven approach. In the utility track of Cardano, what we've done is we've shown that not only is that possible, it's easy. We look to Hydra when we talk about where are we going. Well, we're successful, and boy, the world's going to know it soon. And what does that mean? Tens of millions, then tens of billions of transactions, then trillions of transactions one day running on Cardano which means we need to have an all-of-the-above solution to scalability. Optimize the base layer, side chains, roll-ups. We need to have different ways of handling light clients that preserve inclusive accountability. And yes, we need the ability to process things off-chain with a reasonable trust model. The power of Hydra is we built extended UTXO and we built Hydra hand in glove so that these things work together. They're isomorphic with each other, a word you'll hear a lot. It's just seamless. From the consumer perspective, they don't care if it settles on the main chain or on Hydra, it just works. That's the vision. And if we get there, that means you can write applications that are truly scalable. You can have a million customers, you can have 10 million customers, and it just works. The infrastructure takes care of it. That's the vision. We talked a lot about impact at this conference. We said, hey, we have a big heart, we have a big soul. This is not just about making money. This is not just about building some piece of technology that is a novelty. We care a lot about bringing everyone along for the journey. We care a lot about the collective wealth of experience, knowledge, and resources we create for everyone, everywhere. And that's what we've been talking about in this conference. You know, those Silicon Valley types, they seldom go to Cape Town and have a conference there. We did. And we were all over the world. There's events all over the world. I think there were 29 being held. Many places, including Vietnam. That has one of the best cryptocurrency communities you'll ever meet and see. Last time I went to Ho Chi Minh, over 3,000 people showed up for my speech. It was incredible. And I was told it was a small conference. It gives you a sense of the just passion, the enthusiasm, the excitement. And that is where the impact comes from. Because almost every conversation I have, when I go to these types of places, they keep saying, how do we make it transparent? How do we make it fair? And how do we ensure that it lasts even if the government doesn't want it to? Or some power agency doesn't want it to? How do we make sure that once it's out there, it's the people's, it belongs to them? So we had many presentations along the lines of the heart of Cardano. There are a lot of stake pool operators here. Come on. Yeah. And a lot of you donate some of your proceeds to charity, whether it be clean water, gal down in Argentina that buys meals for kids, simple stuff. You're small businesses, but you're small businesses with a soul and a heart. You care. That's the spirit of Cardano, and we showed that here at this summit. Presentation after presentation where people got to tell their stories and show the impact, and I think the message we want people to leave with is, we're just getting started. Yeah. We're going to change everything. <laughs> Then we look to governance. Oh, governance. This is the hardest one of all of them. Boy. Why? Because... Do we have a government that works? Exactly. The one thing 
of all the things that I know from the places I've been, been to 52 countries the last few years, you know, the number one complaint is my government doesn't work. The Swiss say it, the Russians say it, the Chinese say it, the Japanese say it, the Americans, we say it. No one's happy with their government. So yet somehow, some way, we must build a government for Cardano together. That works. Good luck. And you know what? We're going to get it done. And we've been showing every step of the way how to do it. You get the incentives right. You get people to participate. Not, I voted, but I thought about it. How many people vote versus how many people actually think about their vote? Put the effort in. Weigh the issues. Talk to people. These types of things. And that's what we've been doing with every step of the way the Voltaire Agenda. From concepts like the DCF, which we introduced here, which is about how do you bring great consortiums together, dozens of powerful actors with hundreds of millions of dollars to go do crazy stuff. Yeah, we're even breaking the mics. <laughs> Two, how do we transform Catalyst to have total control over the system parameters? You don't like K, you want to make it bigger? Well, you should decide that. You don't like the pledge factor? You want to change it to something else? Well, you should decide that. How do we get that done in a way that's fair and balanced for all the stakeholders who are at the table? And we leave no one behind. And we've seen a lot of great presentations, a lot of great efforts. We've seen superheroes like Dor, for example, who's been tirelessly working with you, the community, for well over a year. I don't think the dude sleeps. Honestly, I just think he just has a pile of work and he just zips up his blanket and hangs out right here, wakes on up, gets right back to work, Monday through Sunday, seven days a week and loving it. Because the problem deserves that kind of attention. You deserve that kind of attention. It's pretty amazing what we've seen. And he's right there, he's smiling. Yeah, give him a hand. There's a lot of superheroes here, and I want to thank them all. I don't have enough time to thank them all. I really don't. And I also want to thank each and every one of you for being part of this community. You know, Cardano is nothing. It has no value unless there are people who use it and there are people who care about it. Those four tracks we talked about so much, but what we showed these two days, the cryptocurrency space is, we're here to stay, we're huge, and we're going to get it done. That's what we did. One more thing. Always wanted to say that. So... Some of you may recall that we released a very interesting paper not too long ago. It had something to do with like algorithmic stable coins. And if you actually seriously read the paper, the first thing you'd say is, I don't understand the paper. Because <laughs> it was an unreadable paper. It had lots of math, lots of text, lots of formal method stuff inside of it. And we've had a skunk works of people working diligently for the last few months to build a prototype of that. And I said, you know, wouldn't it be so cool to pull a Hyperloop, design it, and then give it to somebody who really knows what he's doing? So we said, gosh, what partner do we have that has the necessary experience to take this amazing piece of technology and make it real, make it consumerizable, get it into payment systems, get it so that Starbucks could accept it, all of these things. How do we... How do we find a partner like that? Well, it turns out we have one. So I'd like to welcome to the stage Shahaf from Cody. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Wyoming. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about Jed. Um, well, currencies will be digital in the future. Nobody can deny that. And stable coins are going to be a major part of it. And Jed is one of the most sophisticated algorithmic-based uh, stablecoins out there. Uh, and it's more than just a stablecoin for payments or DeFi. This will be important in, uh, on the protocol level to have prediction of costs, cost predictability. So we're super excited about this. 
uh, and Cody is the issuer, and we want to welcome everybody to log in, even right now, to dged.xyz and uh, start uh, minting in the coming weeks or so. Yeah, absolutely. I tell you, his team, I visit them in Tel Aviv, is one of the best I've ever seen. It's a rare combination of just brilliant business minds and brilliant technical minds who also understand how to navigate the regulatory reality of the world. And, uh, you know, when we designed Jed, we realized that this is the foundation upon which we can start discussions for central bank digital currencies. This is the foundation upon which we can discuss value stability in general, not just pegged to the dollar, but pegged to any notion of value and baskets of cryptocurrencies. It's an, a well that just keeps on giving. And so if there's going to be a partner who finds a way to bring that to market, you got to have guys that have the ambition to do all of the above. And more. And more. So thank you so much for being part of the family. And again, go to djadbot.xyz. You guys are the absolute best. In the coming months, we're going to see so much. We're going to build so much, and we're going to build it together. And I cannot wait for Cardano Summit 2022, because we're going to show them how great we are. Thank you.